Hi, and welcome to On the Road with Bobby Halton, and we're live again from FDIC 2008, and it's my distinct honor right now to have with me the 2008 Courage and Valor winner, uh, the Ray Downey Award Medal winner uh, recipient, Mike Cabral. Mike's from Fall River, Massachusetts. Mike made a great save. He rescued two uh, young children from a uh, housing project fire. Mike, tell us a little bit about Fall River. How big's Fall River first? How big a job you got? Fall is uh, approximately 18 square miles. Okay. Um, How big is the fire department? How many men on the 232 fire department? 232. 232 guys. Well, that's a big job. Yep. Big job. How long you been on? Six and a half years. Now, you're also a guardsman, Army, right? Um, no, I'm out. I did nine years in the okay. National Guard. Nine years in the Guard. Now, you're in Bosnia, as I understand? In Bosnia, yes. Yeah, so, well, good. So, you've done your service military. You've done your service fire. You're still doing your service fire. We're not done with you yet, right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep riding you. So tell us a little bit about your family. Where are you from? From Fall River, born and raised. Okay. Uh, my family's from, um, immigrated from Portugal. Okay, and you're the youngest of? The youngest of 12 children. Youngest of 12. My mom's the oldest of 12, so I know big families. Yeah. Uh, and he met, Mike was uh, lucky enough to meet my uncle, who was here, who was surprised him by being able to speak Portuguese. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a lot of our folks in the, back there in that part of the country. So tell me a little bit about that night. What happened that night? You were on duty. I was on duty. Call still, still alarm came in. Yeah. It was uh, approximately one, one in the morning. Um, structure fire, reports of structure fire, a local housing project. Um, and as we approached the scene, I noticed the heavy smoke coming from the area. When we got there, it was full of chaos. People screaming. Um, reports were that there were two children trapped on the second floor. Right. Now, how are you staffed? You're, you're riding an engine? Yes. So, t two firefighters with you, three firefighters, what are you, what's, your, what's your staffing like? We have the driver and a side man. That's three it. of us on okay. the case. Okay. So, stretching a line is, is, is going to be, this is a second floor fire or third floor fire? Second floor. Second floor. Second okay. floor fire. So, you're looking at all this chaos, you got good fire on the second floor, you got one guy with you to help you stretch a line, and you decide to go elsewhere. Well, I knew I knew time was of the essence. You know, uh, the amount of smoke coming out of the building. I knew it was either make the move or it was going to be a recovery, not a rescue. Mm. So uh, I took the initiative, told my side man to meet me up on the second floor with the line, and made my entry. Mm. And, uh, started my search up the stairs, of course. No visibility and extreme heat. And first room I entered, I realized it was the bathroom. Okay. Okay, and made my way across the hall, feeling my way around. I um, felt the first, what felt like a crib, come to find out was. N no victim in the crib or under, so I continued my right hand search, came across a bed made my sweep and felt my first victim, mm. the foot of a three-year-old little boy. Mm. I continued my search, but uh, I wasn't successful in finding the second victim. I had to make the call at that moment, and I felt that I had to get him out. Um, it was a tough decision, but it all worked out. So you, you take the little boy out. And I, I heard they say they say you went down the stairs kind of quickly. Yeah, I lost my footing and I stand low, but of course, right. feet first coming down and lost my footing and slid down the stairs. Right. Uh, so you get the little boy out. You're outside. The line is starting to head up the stairs. You've already done a pretty heavy duty search under some pretty difficult conditions, and you took a pretty good beating. What's going through your head? Why, why did what happens now? All I kept thinking about was the second victim. Uh, I mean, of course, getting first aid to the first, you know. I, right. But as soon as I exited the building, there was my brothers were right there. They started administering CPR, and I knew I had to make another entry. There was no doubt in my mind. I had to make another entry. Followed the line back in, and followed my footsteps. And I knew she had to be, I knew the victim had to be in that room. I, the thing was, I didn't know exactly where. So I made my way around, found the bed again. This time I got on top of the bed and really swept it. I felt the wall, the bed was up against the wall. 
and when I searched on the side of the bed, between the bed and the wall, I felt the uh, hand of my second victim, mm. six-year-old little girl. So you start taking her out. I was making my way out, um, retract my, my path in. At the threshold of the bedroom door, I was, a, I came into contact with, you know, my brothers that were right there fighting the fire. And uh, mistakenly, you know, with all, you know, no visibility right. and stuff, my mask was inadvertently pulled off my head. And I took in some smoke, and at that point, I, uh, Lieutenant DeFaria, he was the, uh, he was the officer of uh, Engine 2 that night, and uh, I handed the second victim to him, and he made his way out of the building with her. So we get the little girl out, and the medics race through the hospital, and she does survive, right? Yeah, she was in critical condition for uh, over two months. So if you hadn't gone back up, Mike, what do you think the odds would have been? Oh, she would have died. She would have died. There's no so, question. So you made the right decisions. Tough decisions. I mean, we always say keep your crews together, do what you do. But that's the difference between a thinking firefighter and a firefighter who's just got, you know, book learning. I mean, you know that you look at conditions, you make a decision, and really, your peril was secondary to these kids, which is important. A little bit about the story that I found out after, and Mike wasn't able to tell you all of it, but the fire was started by a disgruntled ex-husband of another resident, right, who was trying to retribution to an ex-wife or something by lighting the building on fire? It was um, the ex-boyfriend of the mother of the victims. Oh, the ex-boyfriend yes. of the mother of the victims. So this was a this was a, almost a, like a hate crime or yes. something kind of deal. This is a this is a real bad guy trying to hurt these kids, and and you got between him and a bad guy. I mean, you know, you did you did a wonderful thing. So what do you think of all this attention? And, and this is a really humble, it's quiet like, guy, which kind of cracks me up because you're you're perfect. You're just a, you're, you're just the kind of guy we always get. And I go, what the hell is all this attention? Uh, it's it's been crazy. Yeah, but it's, it's a great crazy. story, Mike, because what people have to understand is that firefighting is art. It's more art than science, and sometimes we have to make decisions that go against what we normally would expect, what we normally would train, only when we think it's going to result in somebody living who clearly won't live. And you did that, and you did it correctly, and you did it heroically, and, and you did it right. And it was funny because when we called the we called him up, he thought we thought it was a joke. Yeah. He thought he thought his brothers in the firehouse were. Putting, us, putting him on that he was getting put up for, a, you know, for an award. He's like, go on. That was months ago. <laughs> so we're really glad you did. Now, is your mom and pop still alive? Are they here? Or? My dad, God rest his soul, he's passed. Okay. And was my your mom, mom here? My mom is here. So she's got to be real proud of you, huh? Yeah. Mom mm -hmm. and my wife. I mean, everybody's been great. I mean, it's... And the youngest of 12, yeah. you're going to take an avalanche of abuse from your siblings over this one. <laughs> and this is going to get ugly early, isn't it? <laughs> they're, they're all pretty proud. They're I bet they are. We're pretty That's proud good. of you. We, we're really honored that you're here. And we think, you, we think you really represent what values and principles we think, we know, the fire service is. You know, there's a lot of people out there who want to tell you what the fire service is, but if you want to know what the fire service is, talk to guys like you. And the Downey brothers and I both agree, and everyone else on the committee, that. You did what Ray would have done that night, and, and you should be damn proud of that, and, and always be proud of that, and, and keep training and keep teaching the guys. And if I, if I ever get to Fall River, I'll try to stop in and say hi. And come you, on down. <laughs> if you ever get out to Tulsa, we'd be happy to have you stop by and see us. Mike, it's thanks for stopping great, in on the Thank road you. with Bobby Halton. Remember, be careful out there. This is Bobby Halton on the road at FDIC, and we'll see you all here again next year.